welcome to another week's reading vlog. How are you? I am feeling fabulous, thanks for asking. <laughs> Today is obviously Monday and this marks the first full week of the newts but this vlog will be like newts part two because obviously the newts started midweek which really like fucks up my vlog schedule and kind of irritates me. <laughs> But whatever, we'll just pretend that all of last week was newts. And I've got to go and finish editing that vlog because I had an hour and a half worth of footage. I never, ever vlog that much. So I don't know what the fuck I was playing at last week, thinking I was all important or something, because I have so much footage. I edited some of it last night, but by no means all of it. So I've got a fair bit to do editing wise this evening. So the sooner I get started on that, the better. Um, because I've got all that to do, dinner is a lazy pizza thrown in the oven today. <laughs> in terms of reading, I'm obviously still reading Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson and I am buddy reading this with Francesca. I have read today's section, so has she. So we are now up to chapter 23, which is page 256. So I don't know if we will finish this tomorrow or Wednesday but either way it will be wrapped up pretty soon this week. I'm really really enjoying this. Um, I mentioned in last week's vlog how I had heard that there were similarities between Howl's Moving Castle and this because Margaret Rogerson is a massive fan of Howl's Moving Castle and I had heard Jess mention that the male character in here has some similarities to Howl and is a bit like swoony and yeah yeah, he is. Uh, there are definitely a lot of similarities that I'm drawing on between this and How's Moving Castle, but not so much that it's like rip-off or unoriginal or too inspired by, but I'm really, really enjoying this. And I'm also enjoying chatting about it with Francesca because we're able to discuss things as it goes and we're both enjoying it a lot, definitely more than her first book. Elizabeth as a character is really intriguing and very well constructed in my opinion. All of her characteristics so clearly stem from parts of her upbringing and I'm just really into it, so really enjoying her. And Nathaniel Swoony, her eyes, love him. Also, uh, his name escapes me, Silas, his name doesn't escape me, Silas is really intriguing me and I'm very curious to learn more about him. So really into this. I don't like judging it so far into it because like, I'm not even near the, well, I suppose I'm closer to the end than I am the beginning, but I don't feel like I'm near enough to the end to give it a solid star rating. But if I were to estimate what my star rating for this is gonna be, it feels like a five star. I'm very much invested very into the magic and the world and the politics and the secrecy and the enigmas all around. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this. But yeah, I should finish this either tomorrow or Wednesday. So that's what I'm reading at the minute. I was planning on starting Brightstorm, which is not in here because it's downstairs. I'm planning on starting Brightstorm this evening. However, I am also <laughs> buddy reading A Darker Shade of Magic with Gavin <sighs> and I have not started this yet but I think he wanted to read like the first 60 pages today so I'm gonna start this with him. I reckon we'll probably end up reading up to part three, The Grey Thief, I reckon is gonna be today's section but I will chat with him and find out but yeah I'm so excited to be rereading this especially with Gavin as well because he's not a massive Schwab fan like me and I'm really hoping he will be by the time I'm done with him. <laughs> I haven't physically read my collector's edition yet either so I'm looking forward to that and it's got like the fancy ribbon bookmark in it and I'm just very excited to get into this. I've shown this edition off before. And it is also the edition that I gifted Gav, so he's reading this one as well. Very excited. But uh, yeah, this is one of my all-time favourite series, so very excited to be re-reading this. I can hear Jake crashing around in the kitchen, which can only mean pizza's ready. So I'm gonna go scoff my face, edit last week's vlog, post last week's vlog, read A Darker Shade of Magic, or the first 60-ish pages, and then see what time we're at, because I feel like that might then be the end of the evening. But I'm really pleased with my progress so far in the day in that I've read a decent portion of this already. And I'm only now cracking off the vlog. Yes.
Hello, happy Tuesday, happy, I don't know what the date is, what is it, like the 6th of August? So 6th day of the newts and uh, your girl finished her third exam. Uh, yes, that's right, I finished Sorcerer of Thorns today, as you know, buddy reading it with Francesca because I would have told you that yesterday. We did decide to do the whole last chunk today and I finished it and I loved it a lot. I was so heavily invested. There was a point in the last bit where I genuinely had a moment of like forgetting everything around me except this book. I forgot that it was a book. Whilst I was reading it, I had such a bizarre experience of just being like so there and in it that I... It, it felt too real and I was too in it and then I kind of snapped back and was like hold up this this is a book called Sorcerer of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. <laughs> I had such a bizarre moment but I loved it so much. I'm gutted that it's over but also I'm so happy with the whole experience. I genuinely am not sure if there's anything about this that I disliked. Like the first couple of chapters I was a bit bored because it was building up a little bit I suppose but like I <laughs> loved it. I loved it a lot. I'm giving it five stars. I really recommend it. The magic in this is so much fun. The sorcery, it, it's amazing. I adored it. I've already spoken about how much I love Elizabeth as a character. I still do. I still think everything that she says and does is just very believable for her character and her circumstances. Nathaniel, mm, love him a lot. And again, I can still see the Howl similarities. Like, it's there. I love Howl. I love Nathaniel. I am a sucker for this. So yeah, I have nothing but praise for this book. I had the best time reading it. It was so immersive, so, so captivating, so much fun. As I say, I literally forgot the world whilst I was reading this and it was such an incredible experience. Love it. The like contrast between good and evil throughout and Elizabeth learning, not the difference between good and evil because she's always had this like stark black and white difference, but like learning the grey in that not necessarily everything that she thought was evil is evil and there is more to the world and more to life and more to everything than she ever imagined and knew and the development of her and the development of the character relationships as well was incredible and not so much development with Nathaniel because he I think he had that throughout but the way his shell cracked around Elizabeth and the way we got to learn more about him and see him emerge and I just feel like it was the perfect pacing for that plot um, and we all know that romance is not primarily my thing and there is romance in this but it wasn't the main plot. Yes, it had a decent thing to do with it, but it was not the main plot. The main plot was something bigger, something political, something to do with dark magic, blah, 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 blah. You know, all those things that I can really sink my teeth into and get into. Um, and the romance wasn't cheesy, wasn't overpowering, wasn't eye rolly. I did not eye roll once there were no physical eye rolls. So that's a sign of a romance that is palatable by me. <laughs> but yeah, I loved it. And I did have a few swoony moments. One, because we know I'm into the na na blah, blah, blah. One, because we know I'm into Nathaniel. But two, the relationship was just very pleasant to experience. 
and I had a good time. Right, I will stop rambling about this, but yeah, five stars. I do really recommend it. And it is the book for Read Rate Review, which I believe our live stream is going to be on the 14th of September, which I think is the second Saturday in September at 11pm GMT. So if you haven't read it and you want to be involved in that and the like big discussions that me and the guys will be having, then get on it. It's one of the first read re review books that I've like really loved. So yes, lovely. Um, and then of course I was reading A Darker Shade of Magic last night in the bath and I read up to part two, I think it was, yesterday. Um, and then today, so far, I've read up to page page 92, but I need to read up to page 109, which is part five, uh, which is only a little slither, so that won't take me too long at all. But this is one of my favorite books ever. So needless to say, I'm loving this. Meeting Delilah Bard again for the first time is such a lovely experience. If you're not aware, Delilah Bard is my favourite character of all time ever. I love her, I adore her, I think she's incredible. So meeting her for the first time again has been fun. Seeing how she was to start with like back at the beginning, I still love her, I just love her attitude and I'm probably just going to continue to fall in love with her over and over again. But yeah, buddy reading this with Gavin and witnessing his reactions as well to the characters, like he's already gone swoony over Kel and Rai. <laughs> so this is just going to be a blast the whole way through. I'm very excited to keep reading this. And then for my like main personal read, because Dark Shadow Magic we're just doing a little bit each day. I'm going to be reading A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. I mentioned yesterday that I was going to be starting Brightstorm. I lied, that's not what I meant. I meant A Pinch of Magic because Brightstorm is going to be a bit later. Um, I started this on my walk home. I got eight pages in and stopped um, because it was too windy for me to be reading whilst walking. It was just not happening. My hair was all in my face, my skirt was blowing up, the pages were flying around everywhere. It was not a good experience. So I got eight pages in and stopped. But I will be continuing with that this evening after I've caught up with this. So, you know, all in all, having a pretty good day. Um, and then on top of that, I have a parcel. I know exactly who this is from. This is from Gavin and um, I gave him my new address and I did it with the little rock star emoji as well and I said, you know, that emoji. I said that emoji is vitally important without that the postman will not know where I live and he's actually put the emoji on there which is really cute. Bless you Gavin. Um, but I know what this is. Gav said he was sending it my way so this isn't a surprise. <laughs> Da, 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 da. It is The Land of Raw by Jenny McClarkin. How the fuck do you say that? Jenny McClarkin. Something like that. Illustrated by Ben Mantle. That's an easier name to say. But yes, this is The Land of Raw. This is the Waterstones Children's Book of the Month for August. And we all know I love a middle grade and I usually love the Waterstones Children's Book of the Month. So I'm very excited about this. When Gavin was talking about it, I said, oh, I need, need me some of that. Look, it's all about dragons. <laughs> I see a cluster of jelly-shaped islands, a castle rising out of the sea, and three dragons soaring through the sky. And written along the top of the map, in spiky handwriting, is one word. Raw. So I think this is about kids that like make up a land of raw, and then they grow up and kind of forget about it and like it was make-believe, and then they find out that it wasn't make-believe and it's real. When twins Arthur and Rose were little, they were heroes in the land of raw, the imaginary world they created. Raw was filled with the things they loved, dragons, mermaids, ninja wizards, and moonlight stallions, as well as the things that scared them most. Now the twins are 11, Raw is almost forgotten, but when strange things start happening, Arthur begins to wonder if maybe, just maybe, Raw is real. So yeah, and it's got all this like cool artwork in the flaps. 
but yeah I'm very excited to read this because I love a middle grade and then a cute little handwritten note from Gav I'll frame this Jade you're amazing I hope you enjoy this one good luck with your newts love Gavin Gavin you're amazing thank you very much for this uh, good luck with your newts uh, love Jade so yes thanks Gav I'm very excited to dive into this not during the newts though because you know priorities um, and then I also have another little parcel here which I'm gonna open I had a moment yesterday where I was looking for a very particular bookmark um, and I couldn't find it and I was very upset about this because I liked that bookmark but for the life of me I have no idea where the fuck it's gone so I got some new ones <laughs> Not that I necessarily need new ones, because I have a lot already, but listen to my logic here, right? All of my wooden ones are using hardback books, because I feel like in a paperback, if it gets bent, the wood might snap. So I don't use wooden bookmarks in paperback books, but my wooden bookmarks are my favourite bookmarks. Um, I have one paper bookmark that I use all the time for paperbacks which is this I'd rather be reading one um, which is from White Saturday White Saturday and Company White Saturday Company something like that I'll link their Etsy store down below if I remember but I loved this one and it was another one from theirs it was the currently reading one that I ordered when I got this and they're the two paper bookmarks that I use a lot like they're the two paper bookmarks that I use when I'm reading a paperback book but I have lost the currently reading one so I don't know why that's gone and I'm very upset about it um, but because I want another paper bookmark and I mean I know I've got literally all of the collectible fairy loot ones that they do in all of their boxes but I don't use them for whatever reason, I just don't. So in a moment of weakness, I went on to Etsy and bought these from, uh, what's the company called? I can't remember and there's no business card. It's like Eleanor Illustrates or something. I literally just went onto Etsy and typed in bookmarks and scrolled. And of course I got loads of like, jangly metal ones that I'm really not into. Oh, there is a um, business card. Eleanor O'Neill, uh, Eleanor Illustration.etsy.com is the Etsy store. So I will link that down below as well. But it's all these little illustrations and I thought it was adorable. So they're all double-sided as well. Let's bring you in here. So this one is obviously all killer whales, adorable. And then this one is all like jungle creatures and this one is all cacti. Um, but then flip them over. So on the other side of the killer whale one is just blue whales, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, blue whales on the back of that one. So it's a whaley one, I think it's adorable. On the back of the jungle print one, you've then got savannah animals as well. So it's like opposites, but all wild animals and then on the back of the cacti one <laughs> you've got llamas i i love it i'm so happy with these they're just so pretty i love them so i'm very happy that i've got these and now i actually have some more paper bookmarks that i can use so i'm happy with this all right let me indulge myself on these and you know what for these and shipping in the UK, because they're a UK company, was like four pound, bargain. So yes, very happy with that. I think I might use one of them now. I'm kind of tempted to go for the like animals one. I like it. <laughs> right, okay, I'm gonna shut up now because I've been speaking for 20 minutes. Wow, this vlog's gonna end up being long because I don't know how to shut up. Okay, yeah, I will check in with you later on when I've read a bit more and have something different to say. <laughs> Hi 
Hello, hello, hello. Um, have I actually vlogged today? I don't think I have, but it's Wednesday evening, uh, night really now. It's ten past ten on Wednesday night, and I have just finished my fourth book of the Newts. This was my Exceeded Expectations for Ancient Runes, which was a book written in past tense, and it is A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. I'm very pleased at reading this so quickly. Um, it was thoroughly enjoyable. I had a really good time with this. It was a very immersive story about these three sisters and their family name is cursed. They're trapped on this island um, and the middle sister is desperate to break this curse and it is the adventure that ensues around that with all sorts of whimsy and magic and fun, fun stuff. And there's these three magic items, like each magical item has a property and goes to each of these sisters. It was really cute, I liked it a lot. Um, I have decided to give it a four star, just a gut feeling because I've literally just finished this. Um, but you know what I'm like with five stars, five stars have to really like pack a punch with me. Um, so a really solid four star, a middle grade that I have thoroughly enjoyed and would recommend if you want a whimsical adventure surrounding sisterhood with a bit of dark magic in there as well. It was good fun, I liked it, I had a good time. Um, and that's what counts. So that is my fourth book down for the newts. Um, and when you consider it's only the 7th of August, that's pretty good. However, I've encountered a problem. So naturally, my plan now, so I've done my A and my E in Ancient Runes. I've done my A in Arithmancy. I was gonna go on to my E in Arithmancy, which was Brightstorm. Um, and the E for that is to read the first book in a series. I'm just going to check that I have got those prompts the right way around. Read a standalone. Is that what I said? I don't know what I said. Um, yeah, an E for Arithmancy to read a standalone. I thought this was a standalone. Um, someone has pointed out to me on YouTube on my newts TBR that it's not actually a standalone. Sarah Ellis. Sarah Ellis has pointed out that it is not a standalone and I thought I had checked. I swear I had checked but alas it is the first of a series so I can't read this now and I'm really disappointed by that so it means I need to pick a different book for that because my other options currently Excluding that because I don't know what's going to replace it. The only other ones I can go on to are Witch Sign, whatever this one is, or Six of Crows. And I'm buddy reading Six of Crows with Becca next week, so I can't read that one. And I don't really fancy going on to Witch Sign yet. I kind of wanted another middle grade, but I can't read this, so I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Why does everything have to be series? I thought that maybe um, The Land of Raw was the first, was um, a standalone, but it's not, so I can't read that, and I just don't know. What's come up here? I know I want a middle grade. Um, what about this one? This is one that I picked up on the buy one get one half price. Maybe this one is? Although I didn't really fancy this one just yet. Yeah, about the kids that are kind of kept as slaves and then they uncover an impossible secret. Let's just see if it is a standalone, if it's an option. Or I might have to look elsewhere. I don't know. This appears to be a standalone, so it could be an option if I wanted to. Just... For the sake of it, I'm gonna rescan. I'm gonna rescan Brightstorm just to be certain. No, oh yeah, Skyship Adventure number one. I'm so annoyed. I just don't know what to pick. So I'm gonna have a think and get back to you because I'm not feeling where the river. What is it? Where the river runs gold or something? Yeah, I'm not feeling that just yet. I will get back to you with a decision once I've made it. <laughs> hey.
Hey, how's it going? Um, I said I was going to pick a book, and I did. Um, you know what is a standalone that I have not read yet? This one. Uh, The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab. And it's weird for me to have had a readathon without a single Schwab book on the TBR for me to then end up in a week having two that are managing to be on my TBR. As you know, I'm buddy reading A Dark Shade of Magic with Gavin. Um, however, this was not on my official TBR, so I'm having a bit of a rejig, um, and I'm going to use this for Defence Against the Dark Arts for my A, um, which is to read a book that's black under the dust jacket, because the predominant colour under here is black, it just also has obviously the golden figure, so I'm going to use that for that, I was using Witch Sign by Den Patrick for that. So my Defence Against the Dark Arts is now A, a book that's black under the dust jacket for this. Um, the Memory Charm one for E is still Queen's Layer because that's what it was and I'm very excited to get to that. Um, and I don't need an O in Defence Against the Dark Arts, but if I get to it, <laughs> Um, then O is Cornish Pixie Swat It Away with a book written by an English author or set in England. I'm going to bump Witch Sign to that because Den Patrick is English. So it's still on the TBR, just rejigging it to fit this one in. And hopefully I'll still get to it anyway because I'm doing pretty well so far. Jinx, touch, wood. <laughs> Uh, yeah, doing pretty well so far. So I've read the section of A Dark Shade of Magic that me and Gav need to have read for today. We are up to page 155 and I think he wants to read another 50-ish pages tomorrow to get to part 9, I think. So I'll read that tomorrow, but I'm loving this. It's not a surprise. I love Schwab and meeting Delilah Bard again. Um, so yeah, I won't babble, but still progressing with that. And then my next solo read is going to be The Near Witch. So I should hopefully finish both A Dark Shade of Magic and The Near Witch this week, because it's only Wednesday night and this one isn't actually that long. So hopefully I'll finish both of those th this week and that will be four books finished this week, which could be pretty awesome. So yeah, fingers crossed for that. But that that's the plan right now. I have nothing more to tell you. I did just film my um, June and July bumper edition wrap up because obviously I didn't do a June wrap up because we were moving. So I filmed that. <laughs> it's a hot mess. When I say a hot mess, I mean I'm sweating. Hot and messy. <laughs> um, so I need to edit that, but I might... Uh, I might start that this evening, start editing that, and then read some of this. I have read the first chapter of this whilst I was deciding what book to pick for my standalone one. I read the first chapter of this. So, yeah. Cool. Right, that's it for me tonight. It's getting late. I'm gonna go and get on with the things I need to get on with, and we'll chat to you tomorrow. Hello! Just a very quick vlog update this evening. It's Thursday, it's 11 o'clock at night and today I've been really tired so I haven't vlogged much. I haven't actually read that much either but just to give you a bit of an update on how much I have read. Um, obviously still buddy reading A Dark Shade of Magic. Um, now we are up to page 205 which is here. So we're about halfway, maybe just over halfway at part nine, festival and fire, and you know, all good things, still absolutely loving this, have nothing else to say, having the best time rereading it. And in terms of my standalone read, obviously The Near Witch, I haven't got anywhere near as far into this today as I would have liked, but I'm up to page 56, which is actually in the middle of a chapter, because I was reading this whilst walking home. Um, and I didn't get to the end of a chapter. But um, yeah, I haven't read any this evening. I was really tired and have then edited a whole video 
and I reckon I'm probably just going to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So that's that. I will check in with you tomorrow when I'm hopefully feeling a bit more motivated. I say that, I've still been productive today because I have edited a whole video, read, you know, 50 pages of this and 50 pages of A Dark Show Magic, so it hasn't actually been as bad a day as I'm making it out to have been, but not as productive as I have been. So hopefully tomorrow we can make up for that and get some decent progress through this one with the witch on the cover. Woo! I am really enjoying this so far though, but I will give you more thoughts tomorrow when I'm a bit more awake. Hello! It is Friday. Hooray! I'm really looking forward to this weekend because I have nothing planned other than reading. Ugh! I do actually have a video I need to film, but other than that, reading? Ugh! so excited. Um, and you know how I said I was doing a double Schwab week? Well, I thought, you know, why read two Schwab books in a week when you can read three? <laughs> uh, today I was walking to work and thought this is a waste of time because I'm doing nothing productive other than walking right now. I need an audiobook. So I thought... What do I want on audio? There's no other books on my immediate newt TBR that I can do on audio. Um, and then I thought, oh, Tunnel of Bones comes out soon and I wanted to reread City of Ghosts, so I'll listen to that. And I listened to the whole thing today, so I've knocked another book off that wasn't part of my TBR, but I've read it now? Again, I still love it. City of Ghosts follows Cassidy, who is a young girl who can step between the veil of between the living and the dead. Her best friend is a ghost and her parents do like ghost story books um, rooted in history and stuff and they get a TV show, which means they have to go to Edinburgh for some time in the summer to film the first episode of the TV show and it's her experiencing the ghosts and the dead that haunt Edinburgh. I loved it the first time I read it. I loved it today. It's been great. Um, I really didn't expect to do the whole thing today but it's a really small book and the audiobook was only like four hours or something so it was really nothing. However, I now need to find a prompt that it fits that I haven't already filled. So it has to be an A for something, and I'm pretty sure the A for Herbology is just an audiobook. Herbology A, Mandrake, quick, put your headphones on, listen to an audiobook. So I didn't need to sit a Herbology new at all, um, but I have in this, and that's another book done. Um, and I had a bookmark in there in case I wanted to pick up the physical, but I finished it. I went for the llama one. Isn't it cute? <laughs> right, so yeah, that's that done. Another one bites the dust. Um, how many books have I finished this month now? Five? One, two, three, four, five! And if I can finish both of these this week, that'll be seven books in 11 days. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, I am confident that I can do that though, actually. Um, me and Gavin are obviously still buddy reading A Dark Shade of Magic. We are up to Masquerade. I am still loving this um, and we obviously have the two days of the week left to finish it. I can't gush about it enough but honestly I'm having the best time. One, rereading it for myself. Two, watching Gavin and like him live reporting his feelings and how much he's enjoying it and it being like I'm bringing him in to Schwab. He will love her. Maybe not as much as I do, but a lot. <laughs> it's gonna happen, Gavin. Uh, so yeah, having the best time. Um, and so far today I have not read any more of The Near Witch, but I know I had one of my three hour baths earlier in the week, but I think I'm gonna have another one tonight because I really fancy one and I think it would be nice to get in a nice lush bubbly bath and read some of this because that just sounds like fun to me so that's what I'm gonna do so lucky you you're gonna get two bath montages in one week don't say I don't give you the content that you come for because I am
absolutely do. <laughs> and reading this week as well. What the fuck am I? Where did I come from? What have I done with Jade? Also, just for fun, because I'm reading so much Schwab, it seems only right to use my Schwab book sleeve thing that came in the Fairy Loot box. I love this so much. Anyway, uh, yeah, cue the bath montage. <laughs> It is three o'clock on Saturday now, um, and it's actually the magical all-nighter. I watched G's live show that she did yesterday on Instagram, and she mentioned that the all-nighter was this weekend, and I had absolutely no fucking idea. So, a bit last minute, but, um, for me at least. But I am sort of participating. I mean, the point of it is just a 24-hour period to read as much as you possibly can anyway, which was my plan for this weekend anyway but now there's actually like what the frick has happened here now there's actually like a reason for that um however my only real set plans for this 24 hour period although i'm technically already three hours into it and haven't read anything yet is to finish these two books um if i finish these then i will have finished five books this week what happened to me is that right is that actually right? I'm just gonna consult Goodreads because that seems ridiculous, but I'm sure that that's right. Sorcery of Thorns, A Pinch of Magic, The City of Ghosts, and then these two. Yeah, it'll be five books this week. God damn. Well, yeah, let's just go with it um, and get it done. Obviously I am still buddy reading this with Gavin, so I need to read today's section today. And then if I want to do it in the 24-hour readathon, I need to read tomorrow's section before 12 o'clock. Um, but I might just finish it all today. I don't know. Maybe. Um, and then obviously The Near Witch as well, which I'm still reading. Um, I still don't have many thoughts on this yet, but I'm not far into it. So I will update you with more thoughts on that as and when I have them. But yeah, I'm gonna settle in and read some. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, yeah, it's about uh, this kind of monster that lives in, is it Perry or Derry or ne Derry? Uh, in Derry, Maine. Of course, it's a Stephen King book and kind of terrorises the children there. So, that's pretty So, so your girl failed. Uh, it's like one o'clock in the morning and I had all intention of reading today. 
but I mean we did the food shop and I did a load of laundry, washing up, mopped the floors and then Jake had friends over so I kind of socialised for a little bit and then I'm not gonna lie I came up into my room, I've been sat in my room well, I say my room, the library. <laughs> it's not like my bedroom. Um, I've been sat in here pretty much all evening. I was playing with Maurice for a bit. I did vlog a little bit of that so you would have seen him. But I was playing with him for a fair while. And then I watched YouTube. And have been really procrastinating. I did read the bit of The Darker Shade of Magic that I was supposed to read today. But I haven't read anything else. So I've got my work cut out for me tomorrow in finishing A Darker Shade of Magic and The Near Witch. I still think I can do it because tomorrow I won't have to do the food shopping, do the laundry, sweep and mop the floors, etc. So yeah, I'm still fairly confident. I actually don't think I have to leave the house at all tomorrow, so fingers crossed. But yeah, um, in terms of the magical all-nighter, I failed that today because um, I am going to go to bed. I might read a little bit of The Near Witch in bed, but I'm probably only going to manage like four pages before I fall asleep. Uh, so yeah, failed that, but not feeling bad about it at all because I've still had a fucking stellar week. I will check in with you tomorrow and hopefully make this week even better. Hello, it is 11.55, so there's five minutes left of the magical all-nighter and I typically would say I couldn't have failed more, but I didn't fail too completely because I have just finished A Darker Shade of Magic. I love this book so much. So, so much. I have so many emotions. I don't feel like I really need to talk to you about it because you probably all know it's one of my favourite books of all time. This was a reread for me. Um, and I loved it. I loved falling in love with Delilah all over again and watching things evolve and so on. I won't say too much in case you haven't read it, but if you haven't read it, oh my god, do it. It's such a good book. Um, I had the best time and the collector's edition has the bonus chapters in the back. Original never before seen tales from within the Shades of Magic world. And I read those as well and one of them was really cute. Ugh, I just had the best time and I can't wait to read A Gathering of Shadows next month with Gav as well. I'm just kind of forcing this upon him. He doesn't have a choice. We're gonna read Gathering of Shadows next month. Um, I'm sure he'll be down for it because I'm pretty sure he's loved this just as much. <laughs> so that is... what prompt was I using this for? Was it Defense Against the Dark Arts? Black Under the Dust Jacket? I think that's what I was using this for so that's another exam checked off. Fourth book of this week and sixth book of... yeah sixth book of the readathon. So um I'm doing fairly well. I keep losing count and having to count which ones I've read. I really wish I had a printer so I could just print off the sheet and then tick them as I go, but um, I don't have a printer, so I haven't done that. But yeah, I have had the best time and I feel so full and happy. I love Victoria Schwab's writing, world building, character building, everything this woman does is magic. Not only does she write about magic, she is magic. And I feel so strongly about this whole thing. I just have feelings. Oh, Okay, right, I'm gonna um, put this one down and then continue with The Near Witch. So still doing Schwab, still gonna be in the magic, and I still want to finish this today, but um, We'll see. I mean, the sooner I get on with that, the sooner we'll find out. So I'm going to crack on with this and delicately place this back on the shelf. And I will check in with you throughout the day to let you know how I'm doing with this. But yeah, Magical All Night are pretty much done now, yeah, in one minute. So, um, didn't do the best. Could have read a whole lot more yesterday, but you know, things happen. We had guests. It got busy. Whatever. 
uh, yeah, I've still had the best time. Okay, right. I will check in with you later on. Hey, so, funny story. It's now two o'clock, or five to two. Um, and I'm at my mum's house, and, uh, my mum isn't here. No one's here. I'm completely alone. I needed to pop over to pick up some stuff and I mean I can pick up some stuff with no one here but I was also thinking like oh it'd be nice to see them and just hang out for a bit and no one's here <laughs> so I'm just chilling here by myself I mean the dogs are here so it's nice to see them again I love them dogs so much uh, I've already been rolling around on the kitchen floor with them snuggling and cuddling and getting kisses and stuff because I, I just love them dogs so much. So much. Uh, but yeah, I'm wondering whether I should hang around. I have got my book with me so I could hang around and just read here for a bit or if I should just pick up the stuff I came to pick up and go home again. I am wondering. Oh my god, also on the way here Another funny story, um, absolutely freaked the fuck out, um, I was at a roundabout, sat at the roundabout, waiting, and a wasp flew into my car and into the footwell, and I screeched, and then I had to move, so I went to drive, and because I was panicking, like, I was really stiff, and then the car screeched, so me and the car made, like, very similar sounds as this wasp was, like, circling my feet in the footwell, <sighs> Uh, and then I carried on and I got here. I was just honestly so stiff. Like I was just looking straight ahead like, don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. Just drive, just keep going, nearly there. Whoo, don't look down, just look at the road. <laughs> uh, and then I got here and opened the door and like it didn't fly out. I don't know if because I was so intent on looking like straight ahead, I didn't see it fly out again or if it's still in there somewhere, I don't know. But yeah, I panicked. Um, and that's not good when you're driving. So that was a bit shit. Um, and I'm kind of nervous to get back in the car because as I say, I don't know if it's still in there. But I guess I will find out. Hello, it is about nine o'clock in the evening now and I have about 100 pages left of The Near Witch. I don't have it on me right now because I've been reading it downstairs. Um, but yeah, I have about 100 pages left of that so I'm still confident that I can finish that tonight. I just then might not be able to get any editing done, which I would have liked to. Um, but we'll see. The less time I spend rambling here, the more time I will have to get everything else done. However, I feel like I haven't done a face mask in the longest time. Like, you haven't had horrific images of me with a sheet mask on for a few weeks. So, I'm going to put one of these on and read the last 100 pages of that book and chill and I'm gonna have a great time. So yeah, I'm gonna get on with that and tell you all about it when I'm done. Just a quick filler on how I'm feeling about The Near Witch. I'm really enjoying it. It's not what I was expecting, but I'm not sure what I was expecting. I mean, it's obviously Schwab's debut, so I don't feel like the world building is as rich. However, it is set in pretty much the normal world just with witches, more like traditional witches, like tied to nature, can control certain elements, very like natural-esque witches. And you know, being a witch was a terrible thing. You know, the traditional witch image. Um, it's more like that. So the world building, I suppose, doesn't necessarily have to be as thorough as it is in other things. Sorry if I'm like slurring a little bit. I have an ulcer, which is really bizarre because I don't get ulcers, like ever. So um, sorry if I'm slurring and start dribbling. My mouth hurts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, enjoying it a lot. Not totally up to normal Schwab standards but you have to consider that it's her debut novel so yeah uh, but yeah 100 pages left I will let you know all of my thoughts next time I speak to you because that will be then um, so yeah I'm gonna put this on and give you a horrific image of that enjoy
is now 20 past 11, but I, I did it, guys. I finished The Near Witch. I've done it. Another Schwab book checked off. The ulcer is still really paining me, so sorry if I sound slurry again. I ended up really liking this. There was definitely a bit in the middle where I thought this is getting a bit slow now and we, I don't know, we're not getting anywhere with the plot. It just seems to be relationship building. There's no plot movement. Um, and then towards the end, all of the action kicked in and I think the pacing was maybe a little off because literally in the last 30 pages the shit went down and like everything happened then so i think maybe the pacing was a little bit off but you've got to appreciate that it's her debut novel so she's obviously improved a lot since then and for a debut novel holy hell this was amazing i did really thoroughly enjoy it so to summarise what The Near Witch is about, The Near Witch follows a young girl called Lexi in a town that has a legendary tale of a witch. The town is called Near and the witch was the Near Witch because she was the witch of the town Near. And since this Near Witch they've become very superstitious about witches in general um, and then children start going missing, a stranger turns up in the town and there's the conspiracy of witchcraft and who is this stranger and why are these kids going missing and what the frickity frack's going on basically is the plot of this and Lexi obviously being our heroine is gonna find out but I really really enjoyed this. Lexi as a character was not one of my favourites for sure not one of my favourites um but she was enjoyable, you root for her, so that was great. Um, I liked her sister, I thought her sister was really sweet and I normally don't like young children characters just because I don't like young children but Ren, who was her sister, was really sweet and really reminded me of my little sister so I kind of, I felt that connection, it was really cute, I really liked that. I also liked their mum's character, although she doesn't have an enormous role. I liked the defiance in the mother's character. That was pretty, pretty sweet as well. There were a shit ton of characters in here that pissed me the fuck off, but that was the point of them. They were the ones you want to fucking punch, and she does at one point, so <laughs> hooray. But yeah, I had a great time with this, and the suspense and the tension was real. Like, this is a page turner in terms of suspense. As I say there was that middle bit where I was thinking where's the plot going but I didn't I didn't want to put it down I still wanted to keep going because I was still in the suspense of but I need to know what is happening so I do feel like I could really fly through it despite that bit of iffy pacing in the middle. All things considered I'm giving it four star not a five star for my queen Schwab um, but alongside that four star rating considering it's a debut novel I thought it was fantastic so um just to wrap up this week because I am gonna stop vlogging shortly my battery is actually flashing at me um but I don't know who the fuck I think I am but I finished five books this week and that that's that so to give you a rundown of um the week I finished Sorcerer of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson and gave this one five stars, loved it. Um, I finished A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison, gave it four stars, thoroughly enjoyable. I finished City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab, I gave it five stars, Schwab is queen. I then finished a Dark Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab and gave it five stars because Schwab is a queen. And I then finished The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab and gave it four stars because Schwab is a queen but Schwab started somewhere. Um, so yeah, I don't know who the fuck I think I am but this is this week's wrap up. Um, I finished seven books so far this month, five of them being this week. I... I don't do mid-month wrap-ups because I don't read enough to warrant that. 
This is the most I think I've ever read in a week, maybe excluding Polathon last year when I did that. So um, yeah, I don't know what happened, but let's hope I can keep this up because this is amazing. I feel so accomplished. I am powerful right now. <laughs> um, yeah, should I do a mid-month wrap up? I don't know. I don't know if I would just rather have one hefty one at the end because that just seems easier, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, but yeah, I've had a stellar reading week, you know. How many five stars? Three five star reads in a week and two four star reads in a week. This has been amazing and three Schwab books as well in one week. I fucking love that woman. It has got to be said. Right, okay, I'm gonna wrap this up now because it's getting late. I haven't edited this vlog, so I might try and get a little bit of a head start on that this evening. Um, thank you for watching. I feel like this vlog's gonna end up being a really long one just because I've read so much, so it's bound to be long because I will have had a lot to say, but I've had a really good week and I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, give her a thumbs up, chat to me down below about whatever the fuck you want to talk to me about, and I will see you next week for undoubtedly a worse reading week, because I'm i not a changed woman. I've just had a good week. <laughs> but yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye!